Easy to remember phone numbers. Here's how you get them. Uh, you phone service provider. That's one place to start. And what you do is you ask them for a phone number that you're going to use for your real estate business that has multiple digits repeating. So ask them for repeaters that have the last four digits. Uh, a great example, some people in this room uh, are licensees of 1-800-SELL-NOW. How many of you are, are licensees? Let me see a show of hands. 1-800-SELL-NOW basically is one of the best phone numbers that you can use and advertise. So what Kent does, and I'm sure Kent will probably uh, be talking to some people at the breaks about it, uh, that's a, a phenomenal number to advertise because you, it's memorable. People will know how to call you and how to get a hold of you. And just imagine if you're using outdoor signage and you see a bandit sign with 1-800-SELL-NOW versus a phone number that's hard to remember. There's a big difference in response rates. So let me just cover a couple of these. Uh, what you can do is you obviously call a local phone provider to find a good number. Uh, call owners of other easy to remember phone numbers. If for some reason you call a local phone provider and they tell you, hey, we don't got, you know, these are your options, you don't like them. What you can do is we've had a couple students that are very creative that pick up the phone and they just start calling really good phone numbers and I bet you if you spent three, four hours doing this, you could make a couple offers for a couple hundred bucks and somebody would be willing to sell you the phone number. And now all of a sudden you have a good phone number. And what you do is you buy the phone number and now you use that phone number to market with. The MLS is, is, is not the easiest thing to work with all the time. And a lot of agents don't even know how to use it properly. But what you do is you kind of dictate to them, hey, every property that goes into the MLS has remarks about that property. And every MLS is different. Here's what I want you to realize. Uh, if you're doing this in Nevada, if you're doing this in Arizona, the MLS that you work with there is different than here in California, different than Connecticut. But you can find who those top agents are. Now here's where leads become valuable. Let's say you put out your first bandit sign campaign and you get 20 people to call you. Well, you're not going to buy all 20 properties, are you? You're not. You might, maybe buy one. Maybe, right? So you buy one, but you got 19 other leads. Of those 19 other leads that you're looking at, probably six or seven of them will already be listed. The seller's just looking for a way to sell and get rid of their property. But there's about 14 other leads there that you might be looking at that are unlisted properties. And of those 14 leads, the seller who is calling you, some of them are prime listing leads. So what you can do is you can find those top REO agents and form a relationship with your leads. Because most REO agents, when you call them, aren't going to pay attention to you when you're new. They've probably been in the business for five or six years. They've probably gotten 50, 60, 70 phone calls from new investors or wannabe investors and some experienced investors trying to get dialed in to get the leads before they get listed. You know, they're trying to get these pocket listings or they're trying to get at least a jump on the properties that are listed. And so what they want, you know, what you want is obviously to go look at that property two weeks before it's listed, have an offer ready the day it goes on the market, and boom, you have a competitive advantage over other investors who don't have that time lapse or a two-week head start.